First of all, I would just like to pay my respects to the traditional owners of this place where this presentation is happening and all elders past, present and future. And I'm doing that quite definitely. I ha just want to, I will have to learn to use uh, my new thing. Um, because this was an idea that um, David Dean and I dreamed up. And I'm really here um, as the non-technical person talking about the underlying things. And I've really been interested in the presentations to date because they're all quite specific uses of OpenStreetMap as at, for particular purposes for particular people with particular interests. And we just happen to live in a continent that has had 60,000 years of being cared for by a culture, which most of us know almost nothing about at all. And with climate and a few other changes looming up on the horizon, it might be really helpful to have those other perspectives available more freely by using the community knowledge that still exists um, in very non-technical, inaccessible places. Uh, so this was the beginning of this um, thing. And Jason Field has been working with us, um, and there's a group of us in the Sunshine Coast, thinking that we need to get some leadership from that cultural perspective in this area. Um, so, uh, da -da. just see if this works. That one, yes. Uh, that's the sort of um, cultural map of this area that um, uh, was originally there. So we tend to have OpenStreetMap very concerned with features like roads in particular, um, and fabulous humanitarian work is being done with that to make places accessible. But actually, um, the entire um, landscape was divided up and then looked after and surveyed and the information about what was growing, what was not environmentally passed on as a matter of survival for a very long time before that. Um, this project has grown out of um, a lot of discussion with elders in Brisbane, including um, my friend Flo Watson and a very bright young man who's currently responsible for the development of the public spaces in Darling Harbour with uh, Lind Lease um, and all the design of the furniture in the public space. Um, he's just absent-mindedly started an Aboriginal business in Alice Springs to build the furniture. Um, and I just feel that um, Jordan Eaton has nailed the sorts of reasons from an Aboriginal perspective why, why these they already have this cultural knowledge of people and place over scales and periods. That's the way they look at it, much more than our local planning authorities and government groups. Um, they educate their children in community, and I think around technology such as OpenStreetMap, from one of the reasons I am passionate about it is, I have been playing around in this place for 40 years. Um, I actually am, I wrote coding curricula in the ACT in 1984. It's a big deal now, but it's still not happening. Okay, I actually think it's fundamental that people understand that people make data and it has all the human fallacies of everything else that people do. It, you know, these are really basic societal survival things, I think, in a digital era. Um, and the spatial research and intuition and leadership. Um, the group in forming up in Queensland will be about Aboriginal leadership in caring for the land because they actually have quite a lot of knowledge. Um, but the technical support, David and I dream of having a really hot um, technical group of with strong Indigenous knowledge and strong connections into that knowledge for us to do some mapping with. Uh, If you um, sort of look at even our highways in open street mapping, they have very long, I've just put the reference at the bottom, but I can give it to anyone. Um, they actually, mostly our highways in Queensland, follow, follow old Aboriginal pathways. Um, and I think that's quite interesting because the song lines were in fact ways of learning the star orientation in the sky 
to navigate yourself around here. So that, that, that culture has a very strong navigational base. It's not the same. It wasn't technically the same, but it was pretty efficient. And as we're designing ways for humans to map, practically, it's probably worth us taking it into account. Uh, Aboriginal culture has a hugely um, topological view of the country. Um, that's just a piece of art um, around the Bunya Mountains. That's another one. Um, and we already have government using Aboriginal ranges and a lot of science to actually manage national parks and things, which uh, that was a link to a national park when I put it in. I don't seem to be that now. Um, but there are, it's easy to find those links. Um, and if we're, I think mapping is something we, both cultures have in common as a very fundamental thing now. Our little culture starting to map, in map <laughs> and, and that culture, oh, with 60,000 years, what have I done? I didn't, didn't knowingly touch it. Um, and that culture with 60,000 years of finding their way around. I worked with pit, traditionally oriented Pit and Jarrah people in, in Central Australia at one point, and um, they, they didn't have a word for lost in Pit and Jarrah. It was just inconceivable that you couldn't know where you were at all times, which is a sort of different perspective culturally entirely. And so, uh, and babies in that particular community, if you shouted out the Pit and Jarrah word for north, which I have to consent, you know, have, have, after 30 years I've forgotten, but all the babies would look in the right direction. Now we compare that with our Boy Scouts and their compasses, it's sort of interesting. So culture is really important about space and I think one of the things that even open street mapping has shown me is that we need to be very careful that we don't have a Google conception of our globe, um, which is my other strong reason for thinking this is really important as a, an Australian enterprise. Um, there are also all sorts of things that um, I, the first slide I just put what Queensland maps, um, Queensland always says about Queensland is always ferns and tropics and why you would want to be and where the bloody hell are you on the beach. Okay, well one of the reasons you wouldn't be on a lot of our beaches would be because the crocodiles might get you and another reason <laughs> would be that the stingies might get you, okay, in the seasons when tourists go there. So it's a complete mythological map actually from a human perspective, all right. Um, but they're all over Australia. There are centres and art galleries and the Chucky, Chucky dancers are one of my favourites um, who, who, and things on that tourists in particular would find much more interesting than sort of um, me, me too American type buildings and structures, okay? So I think there are those reasons why as we need to move away from our coastlines because of erosion and crocodiles, we might think about what else we have to offer um, as a culture. So the aim of, I just put these up, you know, this is the sort of connection. Their aim is a human genome project for international development and our aim is to raise awareness of these. 65,000 years is the conservative estimate now of cultural heritage, engage Indigenous elders and young people in communities in building and sharing their culture. After lots of discussion, we think the marriage of young people needing to learn about these technologies and learn and thrive in a digital society and elders being prepared to just share enough public data and black businesses and art centres and things will be plenty. Yep and uh, to ensure that that is um, the unique value of that culture is recognised and shared meaningfully and valued. Um, our process is to start with no technology and do community mapping things, um, to engage young people to do it, to redesign and render maps. So we get rid of the Google look, fade it right out, um, Mapbox I think can do that and then redesign the maps so they are culturally appropriate for the communities first because unless we engage our crowdsource of knowledge we can't do this for them. They need to do it for themselves which has huge ramifications in TAFE and places where we are all striving to get proper education in GIS happening for students in schools. 
Um, and once sufficient communities opt in, the, re the resulting indigenous renders of OpenStreetMap can be used as a basis for a moving through country app. We started with the idea of the app and we found that in fact we didn't have the database for the app. So that also fits with the previous couple of presentations. And so this is our strategy for starting to get that database together. Um, and we have, I also think it's really important that m we start to recognise how much mapping has been done for government purposes, for business purposes, for whatever purposes, for hiker purposes, which I have no problem with at all. But if this tool is going to start being for community purposes, then we need to make sure the actual applications are also inclusive and shared. Um, and there's just a few other um, considerations. Uh, I was talking to Data61 and they were using 3D printouts of topological maps, um, which I think is a fabulous idea, especially for non-technical elders, for them to actually be able to recognise where things should be and tell us where, where they want data and imagery and other sorts of data put on a map because they don't read um, or our cartography very well. Um, I love that idea and I've now got a contact who can do that in Data61. And um, also um, our pl planned product for our first um, community opt-ins is a printout of 30 or 40 laminated maps TAFE New South Wales might be able to help us with this, um, for the community to post around to direct locals. Okay, so totally low tech, right? But I just found a little company, and I gather there are a few around, um, who think they can put uh, VR attachments onto that for quite a low price per month. So that the co community could have those posters, but people could put their app up and get an elder welcome to country and a bit of a talk about what's interesting around the place. I've just left myself a couple of minutes mm -hmm. for some questions. <laughs> um, and anything technical, yeah. please ask my Thank friend. <laughs> um, I, think, I think the only thing I would add, and I apologise if it doesn't end up on the video, mm. is that this isn't just an Australian thing. I mean, we have this no, it's not. No, it's we not. We have this global OpenStreetMap database, and Indigenous representation in the OpenStreetMap database is close enough to nothing. And I think that at its best, OpenStreetMap is about local mappers mapping their community, going out and selecting things that are of interest to them. And I think that, you know, in, in, in all, of totally the, all of the indigenous you. cultures of the world, um, we should be encouraging them to, to take part in OpenStreetMap and to put the things into OpenStreetMap that are on the ground for them and that are important to their culture. And, and our colleague, Jason Field, has been heavily involved in the global indigenous environment. And so he's been to Canada and he's in the US places looking at this. So, great. Any questions? Um, yeah, just like, what do you think um, OpenStreetMap can do to make it uh, better or easier um, for Indigenous communities to use um, and to map? Um, I think it's uh, cheap, helpful. Um, I could learn to use it enough to be interested and rattle around with David's not low tech format uh, in about 10 minutes. Um, my sense is the most important thing about OpenStreetMap is it's accessible. I think other things, and I actually love your stuff, thank you. Okay. I, mean, I wasn't meaning that as derision, I'm thinking, ah, that's how we'll do it. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you, I'd really like to talk more. Um, but, but I think that um, it's accessible is probably the first thing to all sorts of communities who have just not been able to access anything they make. Everything is done for them. And I personally was um, responsible for starting um, traditionally oriented Pitinjara people off on, remember when little apples were, were like little apple PCs with those fat brown boxes? And it took us, we had a fabulous program in, based in Arabella, and it took, they just took to it like a duck to water. There is just, if the access is there, there is no lack of talent in these communities. It's just that we haven't given them access. I think the most important thing is, is just raising awareness. I mean, one of the things that we want to do, um, that Kate mentioned earlier in the presentation, is we want to look at this idea of whether indigenous remapping parties 
could be something that could help push the out. So you would go to a location, you'd get the interest of the of the elders of the community mm -hmm. and the young and technical uh, indigenous uh, guys and girls, and say, look, let's look at what we already have. If we have anything in our stream your community, and let's look at what we can add. You know, does that mountain have a name in your local language? Can we tag it with your local language in OpenStreetMap? And can we get some great renders of OpenStreetMap that are emphasizing the features that are important to them rather than the highways and the, and the urban areas and that sort of stuff, which are also important to them, but haven't we given how what's important to them in today's culture? Um, what about in urban areas? Because I know there's um, a lot of indigenous people living yes. in cities, so like, what sort of things um, I think it's really, really, really equally important. Um, we're about we're starting, a, 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 I'm, I'm personally place. starting to think about how this might link in to, we're, we're to a project in Logan in Brisbane, which has a big, very urbanised, very moved off country Aboriginal population, but still identifying strongly culturally and with different ways of prioritising and wanting to know information. Um, one of them, at least, is consulting in England about how to minimise the impact of poverty in case there's some austerity thing after Brexit. I find, you know, they have knowledge that I think will be equally valuable in other ways, and they certainly have huge desire for access to meaningful technology for them. And it isn't just things as simple as um, going to your regions in OpenStreetMap and, and if you know that a region has a, a local indigenous name, tagging that. You know, I've gone, I believe we you know, originally come from Brisbane and we've tagged Brisbane City as having mm -hmm. what the tag is, was like name, colon, and the Yeah, there's quite a lot of interest in Queensland because it's still a bit closer yeah. um, in changing names of, of things like mountains back to the original. Yeah. yeah. Got a, got a question up the back, and then I think we better let everyone go in. Yes. Otherwise, they'll eat me. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, excuse me. Um, my question is just about how much your project's focused on, I guess, the story and the additional um, knowledge about places versus just naming places and identifying where they are. Um, I'm personally most interested in the potential of OpenStreetMap to add other data to in a way that is easily accessible to people who make the street map. So it seems to me that um, any any other LinkedIn data, like the sort of VR things that we might be able to generate quite easily now, um, because David, David has so much technology. Um, but <laughs> adding sort of seeds of actual human data to a map, I think is a really interesting idea. Um, in terms of may opening it up so people will actually, you can click on a space and it will link you to somewhere where someone tells a story or tells you some more information. Our app we thought would work like that. So it and alerts you on your GIS when you enter someone's country and then it immediately gives you the option of having a welcome to country and some further visual video information about what is happening. The ease of that means, too, we can use elders to do it because videoing is, does not require a whole lot of graphic um, technology. We just use phones. <laughs> All right, well done. Thanks, everyone, for your